All right, thanks everyone. Well, welcome. Uh, we're going to go ahead and start it. Welcome to Crypto Mastery here this week. Today is August 22nd. How's everyone doing? We got uh, Alex, Lisa, Patrick, Pirate J, Rennie. If you're watching the replay, be sure to like and subscribe to the channel on YouTube. Um, so the markets are down a bit. We're right above 26K. And so we didn't, it's not unforeseen. We did think it was going to pull back in. Uh, there's a whale alert I posted in the M3 Active Trader last night saying that uh, Binance might be selling its Bitcoin to support its BNB coin. Well, why might you ask? Because uh, there's some regulatory scrutiny causing the BNB to drop down below 200. So, you know, Binance has a lot of their funds tied up in their own token. Gee, have we heard this before? So, uh, and similar news, Sam Bankman fried pleading not guilty. Guys, let's hope that we don't have a problem with Binance uh, going under. That would really, really be bad for the crypto industry. And so there was some recent FUD about is uh, Binance also, do they also have their call them Al Alameda version for trading against their customers and uh, more of their hedge fund arm. And that was new news. Certainly possible. These are non-regulated industries still, especially internationally. So let's look at this a bit. We have some regulatory scrutiny on BNB coin. So BNB on the way down, we'll look at that in the charts. So here, following withdrawal issues with Binance in Europe, the nine day EMA crossing the 20, that's a bit fast for me. We'll look at the 21 and 50. Uh, BNB target could be around 205. But um, yeah, so recent developments, market sentiment is questionable, uncertainty with BNB coin, with distrust for the Binance exchange being the likely reason. So, you know, I really hope we don't have another FTX moment coming our way. So, uh, and uh, uh, we'll, we'll have to wait and see. I don't think so at this point, but because at one point they had 7 billion in assets, allegedly, but it's not uh, backed up by anybody. This is all on a kind of taking their word for it. Now, CZ, probably not. I think they have ties to the CCP, uh, too big to fail is no longer we can't ever never rely on that but we need to kind of keep an eye on this here furthermore some of the abrupt decisions left investors wondering if the exchange is still as solid as it claimed so i want to alert everyone to this because um it's probably okay but um you know we just don't know and we want to keep an eye on that if there's enough smoke right there's usually fire so here's uh, some people saying that the broader market questioning Binance transparency was a decision to limit what withdrawals in, in Europe. So that's usually the early signs of a problem, liquidity issues. So uh, Binance now deleted its posts on Twitter, which is now X. It's going to take a while to get used to that. Discussed that it had paused deposits and withdrawals in Europe. So uh, yeah, right here. So Binance customer support, we regret to inform you of temporarily suspended European withdrawals so that's unfortunate. Let's see, our provider can no longer support these transactions. Now, I don't know, is that the bank? You know, the parent bank saying we can't handle it. Is there a banking crisis in Europe? Possibly. I've been hearing rumors about that. And so you will have to keep an eye on this, you guys. Let's just skim through it. I won't go through all of this. But uh, BNB coin, this chart not looking very good here. We'll pull it up on our own and then uh, we'll go through this a bit more but that that's kind of worth noting park it in the back of your mind and uh, we'll continue on this is no surprise here with sam pleading not guilty uh what else is he going to do i mean if he says he's guilty then he's hosed so this is going to drag on and on and uh i'm not going to go any farther in this i mean it's uh the here's the critical part though that we usually look at on our our Wednesday class in M3 Active Trader. So we have the total market cap hovering right over this trillion dollar level. Really need to see that hold. Keep an eye on that trillion dollar level. I would even set an alert. It did dip below that on the drop here last week. If we can't hold that trillion dollars, if we have a closing candle below the trillion dollar level, uh, that's bad. And we'll look at our indicators here in a moment and uh, give you a little bit more insight into that. So let's see, uh, Coinbase. Okay, so this is kind of less, about a week ago. Granted offer Bitcoin, Ethereum futures. Again, the futures though are cash settled. This does not mean that they're suddenly gonna go buy a ton of Bitcoin and Ethereum. So be careful with that. Uh, when the Bitcoin futures were approved, of course that was the market top in the cycle, the last cycle. So 
Uh, and then, of course, uh, FTX was uh, uh, founder Sam was locked up for evidence tampering. I think that was I thought it was a witness tampering. Let's just see a little bit about this. What was the evidence that he had? Uh, I don't really want to go down the rabbit hole. Uh, see, attempted to besmirch Ellison's reputation. Oh, so he had, uh, I think his diary, something about his girlfriend's diary. You can't make this stuff, you guys. Uh, I mean, who would have thought a year ago that Sam would be in jail and then he and Caroline would be uh, in the investigation and, and all that uh, FTX had just imploded. Crazy. All right. Uh, Bitcoin analyst, uh, V-shaped price bounces, RSI hits five-year low. That could be interesting. But uh, let's see on the one hour chart. This is not looking bullish, obviously. Uh, let's see the price death chop. I haven't heard that before. Data from Cointelegraph. They've got pretty good editorials. So let's see. But usually this is a bearish pattern about to head lower because what you can't see here are these moving averages that come down here. Uh, I think Bitcoin, look, there's still that $20,000 CME gap that uh we certainly could come down and hit but what they're saying is that the rsi on a five-year charter i believe he said is showing the v cape v shape recovery thesis this is a heat map here and of order blocks and so i don't know that's one of the reasons i love our indicators you don't have to hurt your eyes with all this spaghetti uh, we'll we'll be able to see it with our uh, our indicators here, so we'll get to that shortly. Okay, so that's about all I can find here. Chinese official sentenced to life in prison for Bitcoin mining. Um, okay, well, anyway, uh, follow the money and let's see. Yeah, I won't go into all that. This poor guy was probably not behind that, not the mastermind behind that in the first place. I won't get into Chinese politics because I don't know. All right, uh, let's see. Bitcoin looks most oversold. So oversold is good uh, since the COVID crash. Key indicator. Let's see what that is. Yeah, the RSI uh, is showing oversold. So that's more of the same news. All right, well, it's, uh, I think that's a good overview. Let's see. Bitcoin extends losses as the global jump bond yields deters dip high. We, we will look at bond littles. The, the inverted yield curve kind of is always a predictor uh of kind of more danger to come global jump of bond yields uh, i have a friend who sent me something on that now well, this is the chart of showing that the rsi is oversold so that could be bullish of course so you know once again we have big signals in all of this and let's see all coin slide begin the week bitcoin ether stabilize we'll look at the charts on that and i can think that's about it okay so uh what do we want to look at here not that not that not that where's my heat map here's the heat map and the overall crypto markets here if we turn off the the gray ones so bitcoin down but barely moving still summertime and i think the thing to keep in mind is that during the slow volume times in the summer it, you want to be careful making any judgments because as soon as the big wall street traders come back usually around september 1st or 2nd they will kick back put their feet on the desk and say all right what did i miss and this is a bit of um storyline here and um you know being a little bit facetious but but it happens they come back and say well i think we're ready to buy let's go you know go and put a billion dollars in this billion dollars there um you know the markets heat up again in september and we'll know the true direction now is that up or down too early to say we've got a cardano and solana and bnb xrp all down two percent uh polygon down 4.3 percent avalanche down 4.3 percent so you know, not a lot of green in here, you guys. And so uh, it's uh, it's not looking good, but these are usually times when we see a nice bounce in the market. So let's just hop over to Bitcoin, see where we're at. Uh, again, here's that hash ribbon indicator suggesting though that uh, we, the bottom is in. And what this says is when we have the blue, uh, the blue indicator on the hash ribbon, it usually means that the prior market cycle low uh, doesn't go lower than that. Now, it could be referring to this level here, but really what I'm reading is we just we need to make sure that we hold the, uh, the, the 15K levels back in this area. And since we had the hash ribbon indicator here, it would indicate that these levels, these lows would hold. So what would I be looking for here? Let's take a look at uh, the overall chart and just redraw this a little bit. Now, I wonder why that got redrawn. I'm on logarithmic here and this trend line is the one to watch yeah so that puts us right down in this range uh it's funny how sometimes i draw it on my ipad it looks a little bit different uh, even in log mode 
So somewhere between here and there, uh, again, we'll look at our indicators in a moment. But um, not looking very bullish here, guys. We we had been watching for a head and shoulders back in this area. What we have now, we see another head and shoulders pattern here. If this is the head, then that's terrible head and shoulders. Let me do it this way, you guys. But uh, this is really what we want to watch out for because the head and shoulders here is obviously a bad uh, bad for Bitcoin and uh, coming down lower. So it remains to be seen. We had, but we're still in an uptrending channel. So it's, let's just take a look at that here and unpack it. And then, but obviously uh, this, if this plays out, oops, uh, what we want to be watching and mindful of this kind of scenario. So whether, however it bounces, I would expect some kind of a bounce right here. So this is why I exercise, I recommend exercise and caution. If we look at the measured move on this, if it does break down, assuming this is the head, let me redraw that a bit. And just so we have these targets in mind, the uh, neckline would be right in this area here, which we already had. I'm sorry, guys, I mean, it's uh, charts are going a little wonky here today. Grab this like that. And um, right, so measured move from this point, the neckline to the top. Okay, so we'll just copy paste that in. So a break of the neckline could take us down again to the 20,000 level. So what we want to do here, this is a zone we really want to keep an eye on. I would suggest would be a good buy zone. Uh, although still exercise caution. I mean, look, um, uh, yeah. So this zone is the Fibonacci golden pocket. But the specific level here, I'll expand this to include that head and shoulders breakdown of the neckline puts us right around 20,700 well geez what is that exact level anybody yeah it's right down at that cme gap so that's concerning now a couple things we have a we have a gap up here two things to see here this uptrending channel has now failed it's been invalidated with that gap now this gap should fill to the upside obviously at some point bitcoin very likely to go back up and break 32,000 i think we can all agree at that but uh, the unfilled cme gap right back in here between 20,300 and 212240 well what is that that's that exact kind of level that we were just looking at so what I'm suggesting here, uh, highly likely at this point uh, that we um, we come back down to those levels here. I mean, we have some support at this level, but this market just not not a lot of reasons for it to go up. Uh, as usual, we need a catalyst in either direction. But again, that uh, CME gap here right around 20,008 uh, with 12 to fill it technically 20,320. Let's call it 20,300. And so in that case, let's see, this is a little different scenario that could play out. So hard to read these markets right now, you guys. Uh, and uh, that's why exercise, uh, exercising caution is warranted. But um, so let me move this one up here. So we have two scenarios still, the bullish, the bearish, see that? And again, that 20,300 puts us a little bit lower so i'd say down around this region you can't see the gap on the actual bitcoin chart it's only on the cme futures so this is uh you know do we want to make this our danger zone or our opportunity zone i guess it could be argued either way but twenty thousand three hundred. so what we have in this area we're not looking at exact levels especially in these volatile markets especially in these low vol volume trading markets we're looking for zones of opportunity now you guys are all taught support resistance lines, you know, essentially we're just a slightly more evolved monkey. As my friend Scott Phillips says, we look for patterns even when they may not be any. Uh, so be careful with having exact limits and numbers in mind. I think until we have some more volume and at least until September until the money comes back in the markets. So why is this is it the zone we're talking about here? Again, the golden pocket retracement from this lower end up to the top here. Puts us about 61865 in this zone between 217 and 212. But that CME gap, I'll just put it on here for us. And um, 
so we're aware. I won't go into why the CME gap is important. Uh, you guys can look it up online. I have theories. Nobody, I mean, uh, many reasons for the CME gaps and why they fill and can fill. But uh, at any rate, what we're looking for here is possibly this zone. So uh, this would be an opportunity zone maybe to pick up some more Bitcoin. Uh, the, the problem with that level, though, as we can see, is that would be a breach of this much longer term trend line. And that would be bad for the overall market structure. So that's why it's a lot of mis, uh, sort of mixed uh, opinions out there. I know uh, so a popular TA guy is calling for 10K Bitcoin. I don't see that. But uh, new information equals new decision. We just really have to see what happens. Do we hold here, start to push higher? What I will say is be very suspect of any push higher right here because we could see this head and shoulders playing out. Does this usually plan, pan out? It does. Uh, back here on TradingView, I was noting this head and shoulders pattern, which you guys can see there. And uh, sure enough that we went down. So the, there are a couple things here I really want to pay attention to. Price actions down below the 21 and 50 day moving average. Now let's look at it on a weekly basis. So yeah, I mean, this, uh, this we're below the bull market support band now as well. And that's right around these two, the 21 day exponential and, and that, that has a, a simple moving average. You can approximate it with the 21 and 50. So let's take a look at our indicators here on the weekly basis. Uh, still looks like some more downside on the trend strength indicator. We have no trend here. I'll turn off the hash ribbon indicator. Uh, I won't turn on the trend indicator because it's not, we're not in a uptrend. So no point in watching that. Uh, and I'm just checking the chat, see if you guys have any questions. I'm not rolling my eyes at you. I've got monitors all around. So just so you know that. But we are oversold here on the TSI. So we want to wait and watch for a bounce. But uh, again, forming that thesis here that if we do start to get a bounce, we want to watch for that as that right shoulder and maybe coming down. I have also seen these sort of trend lines kind of have some significance on the TSI. So, uh, you know, again, we want to just kind of be careful here in the end of the summer. Now uh, we need a bullish catalyst. You know, we have all that news out there with the BlackRock ETF, but likely, very likely that's going to come into it, you know, maybe the end of the year earliest, more than likely first quarter 2024. All right. So, and then of course our early reversal indicator, not giving us any clues. Uh, that would be, hence the name, that would be an early signal that we're going to see a bounce. But I can tell that uh, based on this, it's not really in that range. Uh, the ERI will trigger when the oscillator comes down below, say, the 3 or 5% line. There's different varying degrees of strength on the indicator, but has to get above that 20 line within three time periods. So see this steep bounce there? That triggered. We're not seeing that right now, so I'm expecting a little bit more weakness in these markets. So uh, we can also look at our average true range, but uh, those are... Um, I can tell those are not going to be bullish at this point. It's going to be flipped to the bearish side. So uh, let's see. I'm not sure where the H bar here. Turn off this indicator. Got a little bit of a slow connection here, you guys. And uh, this chart is not cooperating. What's going on here? Uh, Bitcoin. Yeah, so there, there it is. And we'll look at the bullish scenario as well. I just want to finish this thought. So uh, in terms of the... Let's see, I thought I had that loaded. Uh, hang on here. We're going to look at the one hour, four hour. Four hour looks bearish. I think we've got, we see another, setting up to have another drop here, you guys. Uh, just looking at the one hour, four hour. But um, so two things. So we've got that bearish scenario here we talked about. Let's look at the bullish scenario because still possible. We have this other trend line here that could still play out. And uh, if you're new here, you're probably like, this guy is wishy-washy. He's all over the place. Yeah, these are tough markets right now. Um, there are times, and those of you that have been around for a while, where I say, listen, now is the time to get in. Listen to what I'm telling you. All the signals are aligning. You remember back in February, we caught that nice bullish bounce. So when I say to you, those strong signals and in our indicators are aligning, that's when you want to really pay attention. 
uh, I can't read the future, although some of you call me a uh, crypto Thomas, uh, at least used to, but uh, these are almost impossible markets to read for everybody. So um, what I would suggest here is uh, two things here. We see this uptrending trend channel has broken down and been invalidated. You can see we sort of have that head and shoulder pattern forming again. Uh, was this the left shoulder and this is a double head? Very rare that I've seen those. And, uh, and But it, this is higher than over here. So this isn't a shoulder, but this was a, a really tricky one. I thought we were holding the new upper trend channel. We've now broken that and invalidated that. What we need to do is hold right here and, uh, and push higher. But uh, so, but this, if we do push higher, we have to be careful that this is not another, basically, uh, the right shoulder. So you see that? So we could, I'm going to take this one out. This one, this scenario is no longer valid. It's invalidated. From here, if we push higher, we want to watch for this to turn into the right shoulder. So, you know, again, I think it's, uh, as I've been saying for weeks, be careful here. Let's see what happens in September. Um, I think we, we should push higher in September, uh, although it's typically a down month. So I know we, uh, we've all been through hell and waiting for this bear market to end. Uh, unfortunately, it does tend to drag out. And this is the big question mark here, so much so that we need to add in our trusty question mark, say, where does this market go? We don't know. All right, so that's what we want to be watching for. And again, right down to this zone here, which is where we had drawn that uh, for a possible push lower. If you guys are Elliott Wave people, you might have some thoughts on this. I don't follow Elliott Wave. I think it's just too, a little too much, and it's also been up wrong a lot. I prefer our indicators here. So we're, we'll be waiting for following our signals on the ERI and the TSI. And when they align, that's when we'll be wanting to get back in. All right. Let's take a look at a few other things here and get over to Ethereum. So I'm going to remove my drawings here because uh, clearly that didn't pan out. So remove the drawings. So Ethereum here down below 1600 below the $1,700 line in the sand that I'd had. Uh, again, all bearish on our indicators. Oversold though, I wouldn't be shorting. I wouldn't be going long. Uh, this is a tricky one. Now, if you are in Ethereum, which I am, uh, I may consider selling half my position here this is a pretty solid line if we lose say 1630 i'm going to put an alert here and the reason i recommend selling half uh, not financial advice but just a good barometer because that way you're legging in and out of positions that's what the pros do they build and leg out of positions uh let's see I, I did that wrong i want to get it so edit this to below 1630 as my exit and then i'll say in my alert sell half i have a lot of this in my ira so uh, that would be a risk management position. This pattern here, obviously not very bullish. If we lose this level and close below 1630, I would be selling half of the position. Why? Because if it's a fake out and then it rallies, you know, then I'm still in it. The other half, we can dollar cost average back lower and you look for other stop loss levels. But I would exercise caution here because this market does feel weak. We seem to be about to lose that 1630 level here. Actually, is the market moving as we speak? We do have Bitcoin on a one hour, four hour. This is, Bitcoin is about to break down again. This uh, four hour chart. Uh, if you are shorting, po possible Bitcoin short. ETH just breaking down 1630. So um, after the class, I'll, it's, it's no emotion. I'm gonna get out of the, my ETH and hold on for a better entry zone. Uh, but here again, Bitcoin uh, looking to me as if it's going to head lower. And of course, the uh, ATR, which is another one of our indicators, also indicating a uh, sell uh, sell zone and uh, exit back here. So this is not, not a time to be holding uh, Bitcoin here in the short term. Okay, but for shorting signals, this is one of my favorite ones that we I would usually do. When this drops like that and then goes sideways, sideways, and then it hits the 21 period moving average or the 50 and it starts to drop a bit we start seeing lower highs so bitcoin uh, prepare for more downside uh this thing's going lower here and uh, how low look um you know we could have another wave of liquidations wish i had better news here for everybody we've been waiting for some bullish uh bullish news here and to to see uh if we could get a bounce but here in the short term tsi heading down this is how you can use our indicators though again drawing these trend lines on the tsi a little bit more advanced 
So if we if we were to pull up our trading checklist or cheat sheet, by the way, you can get this, our uh, trader success checklist. If you're watching the replay, you can get this here at, uh, I believe it's uh, moonstream.io and trader checklist, uh, trade checklist right there. So that's all you have to do. I'll put it in the uh, chat here for you guys if you're live. If you don't have this, probably if you are, you're already in our groups. So um, but here's what you would use this for in terms of uh, heading down. There are some bearish setups as well. So we go into advanced setups here. If we if we had ERI setting up on the short side, we'd want to look at that. Are there lower highs showing when looking at the ERI oscillator? Okay, so we showed you that on the four hour lower highs and the ERI and the TSI. So if I turn this uh, ERI on, that's our early reversal indicator. And uh, let's see. I don't want that one. Let me pull up a different one here and uh, bear with me here. I've got ERI and indicator. So we also have a new version of this. I'm not going to get into that just yet. I'll pull it up. We have a pro version of it. So uh, here on the ERI, I'd like this more on the daily weekly. Uh, it's been highly accurate in getting us out on the weekly here on the one hour, four hour, even the shorter time frames. Uh, we do go into shorter time frames on the, the uh, M3 trader program that we run in more information about that you can go to moonstream.io uh, slash m3 and uh, a little more about the uh, little more advanced training that we do which includes these indicators and again you can learn more about that uh, by going to moonstream.io slash m3 sort of our highest level level active trading uh, program and um, so and then of course for the indicators just go to crypto mastery.online to get access to our proprietary indicators that I'm showing here today. So back to the charts. Again, this looks bearish. The trade check list showing are there lower highs on the ERI? That doesn't apply here. I'm looking for that on the on the uh, TSI. So we can see that here. Uh, also our radar, we want to look at that. Uh, so we're always adding to this trade checklist, by the way. So uh, I thought I'd had that in there, but this would be a good example uh, to add to that is the uh, trend strength indicator seeing lower highs. So I'm actually going to grab a screenshot of that to add that to our trade success checklist. How about that, you guys? Uh, so um, with that in mind, uh, watch for more downside on Bitcoin. Let's take a look at the total market cap. Uh, we are so far, actually, so ETH bouncing off 1630. So um, what I'll do is reset this alert and we want to, I won't get out of it unless it closes below 1630. I'm going to set an alert at 1625. To keep an eye on this and you know again it's the closes that matter but uh let's see if there's any news on ethereum ah well okay central banks issue warning about crypto i don't know why that didn't come up a minute ago let's see friends tech friend tech absorbs 10 minute ethereum just 12 days after launch not sure what that is we'll check that out so a recent report by the bank of international settlements never heard of them raises concern about the allure of crypto assets in emerging market economies uh, these digital assets have been championed as economical payment solutions, gateways to the financial system, alternatives to national currencies, etc. BI suggests that assets might exacerbate uh, crypto assets, alleviate rather than alleviate financial risks. Certainly, uh, a valid case to argue that. I mean, these things are still volatile and and potent, have the potential for fraud is there in these emerging markets. So suggest these assets should be scrutinized like traditional assets when it comes to risk regulatory issues. Yeah, and I've been saying regulation will be good for the industry uh, as long as it's positive regulation and clear. All right, so we have a number of people getting together, multiple risks. Uh, let's see, liquidity risk like Binance might be happening, might be happening here. Heightened by vulnerabilities such as centralized trading on big, big exchanges. Yeah, I think the, the DEXs will see a lot more improvement here going forward. Those are those decentralized exchanges like Uniswap and uh, some of the other uh, offshoots, Spooky Swap and a handful of other ones. Um, but, um, you know, those uh, those decentralized exchanges, the DEXs have less um, mm, potential for fraud, let's just say. So because there's nobody in control, it certainly makes the case say I'm Bankman Freed, uh, of decentralization. You have no person who's incentivized to move money around 
and borrow customer funds in crypto, uh, you won't have that uh, in these DEXs, although it does seem a little early. Uh, you know, fortunately, we haven't had any big issues with Uniswap or hacks on Uniswap. That would be uh, bad. So, uh, and and MetaMask, et cetera. So we have, let's see, susceptibility to investor runs and operational constraints linked to the scalability trilemma. Uh, we'll go into that. Um, let's see, credit risk, direct market risk, et cetera. You know, I guess what they're saying is in these emerging markets, if somebody has their life savings, which is probably a lot less than we're used to here in the United States, in crypto, and there's a big uh, wipeout, um, those are real, not that they're not here, but those are real, have real economic impact uh, in emerging markets where it's not easy for them to recover. So, but look at this um, outright here. So the report highlights importance of balanced approach. So it's sort of watered down to regulation. So yeah, everyone can say that and we believe that, but uh, we need some regulation that actually does that. Outright bans or restrictive regulations might push these underground. So that's the flip side of too much regulation. Kind of like we're seeing a lot of these top crypto companies moving out of the US uh, and Coinbase considering it, uh, Gemini moving or opening their derivatives exchange offshore, not necessarily underground, but hey, if we overregulate, crypto will go offshore and underground and that's ripe for more uh, manipulation, etc. So about, that's basically what they're saying. Report champions harnessing technology and innovation to refine financial systems. So very watered down, generic uh, ending into that. So yeah, well, we know that. Let's do it. Let's just touch on this. Uh, friend tech, no idea, absorbs millions, tens of millions of dollars in Ethereum in just 12 days. What do they, okay, 63 million worth of Ethereum. What is friend tech? Anybody know? Social platform sent ripples uh, reminiscent of Pepe's. Uh, I've not heard of this yet. Operating on Coinbase, innovative platform, social interaction sounds like an ML MLM to me. Uh, swiftly become the talk of the crypto town. Has all the language for this not being this could be uh, friend tech. Sounds like one of those multi level multi level marketing teams. All right, so okay. What is this thing about? Um, not recommending this. Be, let's see. What does this mean? Platforms ascent. Ninety three thousand buyers. It's a it's a pyramid scheme. Uh, it sounds like. Anyway, I, I don't know. Let's not get into that. Well, that's what's going on with Ethereum, you guys. Uh, we can look at BNB just to see if there's anything that we can surmise from uh, their price action. So we have. I'll uh, pull it up on uh, Binance here. Yeah. So BNB is in a free fall. So the um you know if binance is selling their bitcoin and ethereum to help support their own token which would be uh would be reasonable um that could be the cause of this so what might we see i mean there should be some support back here around this 200 level what are our indicators showing it's a bit oversold uh hugging this lower line on the weekly basis but again, I would wait to see some kind of a support here at uh, 195. Uh, where would things be really bad? I'm going to set an alert. We can use these as surrogates. So on alert, crossing down 185, for example, on BNB. So market sell. I just little notes to myself that markets might be going down. And uh, we use these as barometers and clues uh, and bellwethers. So uh, Ethereum, BNB. Let's see, I want to make sure it's on our watch list. So while I'm going to jump back into our crypto mastery watch list, uh, I believe BNB is in there. We'll just add it to our watch list here. Uh, right, crypto mastery. There it is. Okay, so uh, our watch list has slimmed down quite a bit uh, in this case. So, um, you know, waiting for these markets to come back and improve. So let me jump back to uh, my main list, by the way, so we can also look at uh, total market cap real quick because what else do we see so we see money flowing into stable coins um so here here's where money's flowing by the way we see uh one percent not a huge amount but USTT dominance so we can see this in this uptrending channel might wanna might be a good time to move some of your crypto capital into tether uh, then a nice solid uptrend here 
uh, you know, since back in 2019, USDT dominance here uh, has room for upside and downside, but our indicators would show since we have a, an early reversal indicator here, right there, we have the ERI going a TSI higher signal. Uh, oops, what did I do there? Hang on a second, move these around. Our signal has gone green right here. And uh, we have the trend indicator, key and a bell. So, so money's flowing into stable coins. And uh, I think that's reasonable to, uh, to do and maybe move some over into, uh, into Tether here with this key and bell setup. Uh, we just follow the uh, signals here. But that's what I would imagine we see uh, some more weakness for crypto in the coming week and then uh, money into Tether. Let's take a look at the DXY. And um, in a bit of a downtrend here, can't gather a whole lot from the DXY, although let's make sure we're looking at the real time version. So uh, there's this one here, the TVC is real time. And yeah, so the DXY is starting to push higher here, still in a bit of a downtrend. But and as we know, that's inverse related, inversely related to crypto. So we'll keep a look at this. So here's what I want to get to, though. The total market cap uh, right at a trillion dollars, you guys. This, this is a bit concerning. It held back here, that trillion level. Where are we going to have problems? I would recommend sending alert here. It's uh, both an art and science, but I'd say around $955 billion. And uh, so I, I'm tempted to put skies falling. And... Uh, a little bit tongue in cheek, but uh, but yeah, be aware of that. If we start to lose a tr the trillion level again, markets are going to come down, and we could see some you know lower prices, like I said, down in that low twenty thousand region for the CME gap to fill. And so with that, like we can look at a number of these other coins here. If you did want to pick up some trades on the short side, uh, I don't advocate that, but there are those three X and two X short positions. If you're able to trade on KuCoin, if you're in the U.S., no longer can. But you want to see these levels hold as well. So I'm starting to set alerts here. And what usually will happen, though, is they'll all go on off at the same time. But at least if I see that, I'm just saying sell signals, uh, B or AVAX losing these important support levels, like right around $10, specifically uh, $9 on AVAX. Uh, would be a signal to uh, kind of get out of these. You know, so uh, Phantom Coin holding a reasonably strong support level here, but with overall markets looking so weak, it's a tricky one. Uh, I have an alert already, though, when Phantom Coin gets back above 40 cents, bullish, that's bullish market structure, that would be a time to just start accumulating, in my opinion, uh, back in Phantom Coin. Uh, we had Rune push up nicely. Again, we're on the weekly chart, so I'll just jump back to a daily. Uh, has some overhead support so, uh, resistance there on that trend line. So, you know, Rune um, has a way to go. I mean, if we, from the overall bottom up to here, six that's a 6X. Uh, obviously, we can't go back in time. But uh, here on this, if you were to get into Rune here, it has Rune has some nice potential there. Nice volume coming back in. Um, but it's a bit over, you know, volume coming back in. Overbought on the ERI daily and the tsi weekly i would say rune probably gonna pull back here but that could present a nice bounce point so that's what we want to be looking for here in these cases good bounce points places to start dollar cost averaging near strong support cardano i'm not a huge fan of just because they take forever but you have to say to yourself uh, if i liked cardano at three dollars i love it here because it's a 10x back to the top and we just don't know, but here, 10x back to the old top around $3 on Cardano. So I'd be watching this level down on this 22 cent range for possible accumulation on Cardano. And, you know, the, the risk favorable trade is to buy it here on this or near this level. And I'll have to fix this here really quick. Keep a tight stop loss below the support zone and then have your target up here for, again, we want to see a three to one ratio. So if Cardano, even if it just comes up into this range, which would be around here, you know, I'm just eyeballing that pretty good eyeball and you keep your stop losses really tight, you still have a 37 to one ROI on these in the long term. But I would keep an even tighter stop because this level, it bounce support, support, support. If it loses it's this, I'd say around 
0.01 or 0 0.001 or 0 0.001 right in there that that would be your stop loss we see this risk reward ratio 88 to 1 you know that would be a very risk favorable trade especially if you took some profits down in this region still a 20 to 1. so i, I don't love cardano but i love this chart because you now it's a little early our charts aren't showing that it's time to get in but down in this lower area i'd set an alert back down in here and just say hey at 25 cents 20 call it 24 cents uh, Cardano could be uh, a buy for some dollar cost averaging, and I know some of you uh, like Cardano. So uh, in this case, I'm looking for buy, put a question mark to go and analyze it once that happens. Okay, so uh, that's how we uh, continue to sharpen the saw in these markets. Uh, the rest of these coins really not looking good at all. Uh, what we want to be looking for are the reversal of new trend channels. So those of you that have been with us for a while, you know I love to look for these trend channel breakouts and new trend channels, okay? So here, uh, we would want to wait and set an alert. So how about when would we, when might we think this is in a new trend channel? I'm going to go over here and set an alert to uh, when it breaks out. So crossing above, we'll call it 0 0.60 cents. And what's the alert going to be by question mark? and new trend channel i mean i try to keep these short okay so um when and if what, what happened there uh this alert went way way in the wrong place i'm going to move this down the alert here to around 14 cents because that would tell me it's in a new breaking out at least trying to break out of a new trend channel uh you know looking back you know why do we do this well hindsight's always 20 20 as we know well, so looking back in time, let's say this was a trend channel. Would this have been a good time to buy when it broke out of that trend channel? And sure enough, that would have been an excellent time to buy some Cardano. And because it went up about 8x from there. Okay. So that's that's what I encourage you to look at and have your your favorite coins to, to keep that uh, in mind and uh, not not overdo it with too many projects but again things like you know algorand if it comes back to its old highs and we get it here up to there that's an 1820x that's a 20x potential on algorand good project strong team so you know these are as demoralizing as this market is we'll look back and say these were great opportunities i believe you know i can't say for sure that we don't head lower, but uh, you can see I have had a, a note to myself here, buy more to dollar cost average above resistance. And that means breaking out of a new trend channel. So that's why I'm setting my alerts here and waiting for those ideal opportunities. You know, and you may not catch the exact bottom, but we can certainly put the odds in our favor. And now just imagine, let me stop and say this again, with 20x potential, on some of these going back to old highs and maybe it's 2024 maybe it's toward the end of 2024 going into 2025 i i think it's going to happen next year but uh it just depends on what this next phase of the uh, bear market is but uh just keep that in mind you guys i mean we're looking for projects that are good solid projects that are down a lot from their top that have 10 or 20x potential to get back to old highs and are finding support creating you know support zones liquidity pockets and uh and then once they break out what's their potential to get back to these old highs where they were in this case you know hey 8x beats a sharp stick in the eye but uh i like 20x better and um so you know having some you, you know uh, diversification some diversification you don't want to have 20 coins i would say 10 you know, start dollar cost averaging into your 10 favorite projects uh, at support and not chasing these again. Rune, I think, pulls back uh, and then we might see, though. Uh, however, what else? Let me slow down a bit. What else are we watching for? Could be breaking out of a new trend channel here. And what I love to see is the breakout and then the retest. OK, so if we pull down and retest and we can get our indicators to align the ERI, the trend strength indicator, they're not yet, they're bearish right now, but if they on the next little spin up, I think Rune could be a good possible 
swing trade. All right, any questions, you guys? I don't see any questions, so we're going to keep going. About 10 minutes left in the class. Uh, we've covered the news. We've covered sort of our bigger coins that we want to watch. Again, I don't know if any of these are of interest to you. If you want me to look anything up here live with you guys, let me know. But uh, so that's Algorand. We've got Filecoin. I haven't looked at Filecoin in a while. Interesting project. I would stay away from these really low volume projects, though. Uh, these are the ones that are going to have a lot of trouble, uh, and especially uh, in, in these markets, because the um, while they have some good news, Filecoin is like storage, and they're going to compete with AWS in the long run. But the reality is, you guys, AWS controls this market. They own this market. A little bit of Microsoft, Azure, and some of the other ones. So, you know, it's going to be a while before these decentralized companies can really make a play at Amazon because just think of the head start that Amazon has. And in the end, companies need to monetize and make money to keep the doors open. Uh, Filecoin has a, a very has one of the coolest websites you'll ever see. Uh, they uh, they have decentralized server hosting in the cloud, but um, uh, but so what, right? So let me just pull this up here, just because I told you that they have the coolest website in the world, and um, uh, arguably they do. Let's see, Filecoin. I misspelled it. My bad, you guys. Uh, the error was between my ears on that one. So, all right. So, Filecoin. Let me show you this. Uh, loading the experience. It's worth going and checking this out. I mean, I think long term, it's one to have on your radar. Let's see. Oh, somewhere on here, this is what I was saying. See how they have all these nodes going all over the place. And uh, so, check out their website. Keep an eye on them. Centralized uh, cloud services spread. Uh, this is their whole USP you know, for decentralized uh, cloud-based server places. But uh, look how cool this is. Anyway, I just love the website. Uh, anyway, but um, they have a long way to go before they are a market leader. I'd certainly keep an eye on it. I, I do like the project, but uh, what do we want to do? We want to do this thing. We are, we are chart agnostic. Uh, if it looks good, I'm looking for the same things here, you guys. And what are we noticing here? You know, even a third grader could draw these trend channels. We're looking for, look how this rejected right here. And so a strong resistance on this trend channel from this point to this point, rejected, rejected, rejected. So Filecoin, two things I would look at here. We have possibly a nice support zone down here. Okay, so where would you want to know and set an alert based on this chart? Anybody? Uh, okay, yes, sure thing. We'll look at uh, Matic, OP, Arb, Inch. Okay, sure thing. So, I mean, again, I want to know when the trend channel breaks to the upside. So around 5.5, you know, I could set it a little wider, but I'm just going to say I want to know ahead of time, when did we break above 5.50? And uh, that would be a buy signal for me. New trend channel, I'll know what that means. And, uh, of course, we'll be looking at our indicators. Now, technically, we are having an ERI here. And let me pull that up. But it's kind of a weak one. What do we do with ERIs? We want to see it confirm with the uh, TSI going green. Okay, so we don't see that and above 80, or sorry, up 20. So uh, it's not quite there yet. So that's why I'm saying you just right now during these times, go through your charts, uh, put all your alerts on. And that way, and put it in the notes, why is this alert for this? And what do you, you can make your alerts longer, by the way, and more notes. So let's do one more like this, and then we'll switch over to some uh, coins you guys want to look at. But I see a lot of the same patterns here. Uh, retesting support, and then you want to do this. Say, all right, if it goes back to the all-time high, there's a 10x. You know, with so many cool projects, you want to at least look for a 10x, maybe even a 20x on these. I've given you some good opportunities, and there's look at all these wedges forming, so all these ascending triangles all over the place. Typically, these break to the upside. So, what do we want to do? And wait, for, we want to wait for our signals. Uh, CRV chart looks pretty good. Does that mean we can't break lower? It does not mean that, but it does mean on a risk reward basis. Uh, the, you know, if we hold this up into this profit target range there, and something weird about if it's in log mode, it draws the stop loss very wide. I finally figured out what was going on there. Okay, but here's what I'm saying. Uh, if you 
keep your stop losses tight. These are very risk favorable trades. And I know it might sound like I'm preaching to you right now, but you know, repetition is the mother of all learning. There's a 5X, goes back to all time highs, 15X on curve finance. All right, sand. Uh, um, now, some of these, you don't want to catch a falling knife. This is breaking uh, support. I would not be buying sand. Let's look at Matic really quickly. KS okay, wanted to see Matic. Also a very bearish uh, chart here. Uh, how far more could it go down in this region? You know, I don't know why Polygon. Well, I mean, uh, let's see what the news is on Matic enters danger zone key indicators yeah another 20 percent drop well i mean that that's not hard to imagine because 20 percent drop whoops that's not what i want there would put us at yeah so i'd say uh, probably 30 percent uh, drop from here because right now uh, if we close at these levels yeah, to see how today's candle closes, certainly can rally if it gets back above 55 cents by the end of the day. We do see a lot of recoveries end of the day and also sell-offs. So the ending candle, very important. Uh, I would suggest probably it bounces up and holds here, but the next few days uh, remains to be seen. If we lose that level, then more than likely Polygon comes back down to here. And it's, it does feel the markets have weakened and that may have another flush out uh and so polygon where would we want to buy this though you know if you get an alert here i'd put a buy limit order in uh on polygon matic down here below below 37 cents because let's see below 37.80 i thought i said 37 cents let's see where that draws it uh yeah right down in this range here 37 still not drawing it well right in this range great buy polygon why? Uh, well, there's that great support right there. But um, anyway, so that's Polygonmatic. Uh, I don't see anything bullish there. Our indicators uh, not there, so it's just it's not not a buy. Uh, Op Arb and, and Inc. Uh, all right, let's take a look. J I N J. Uh, we have looked at before, and I forget what they do. It's engine. Is it engine coin? All right, yeah. Look at this, you guys. I N J barely affected by this market downturn injective okay yeah let's let's see what they do here see what their monetization bot model is uh the blockchain built for finance auto executing smart contracts empowering faster more innovative groundbreaking applications very interesting sounds like they have a good monetization model key very key so you know companies that make money uh, tend to do well. Customers are good for business. Imagine that. A lot of these companies uh, don't have customers. They just have a harebrained idea that uh, they have that don't doesn't make money. So we want to keep that as a investment parameter, my, my, my opinion. Uh, do they have a monetization model? All right. Layer one, powering next generation DeFi. Well, DeFi is going to be huge. And so if this is the backbone for DeFi and their customers are DeFi platforms, then hence they have a monetization model. So spot derivative exchanges, hey, newsflash, uh, stock trading exchanges, crypto exchanges, they make money. They're the casino. Great customers to have if that's your business. Prediction markets, lending protocols, and more. So thanks for the tip, Pirate J. This sounds like a great coin to look into because they are going to make money and their customers are going to make money so everyone makes money together uh let's see injective natively uses ibc is highly interoperable which is good multiple layer ones which is good including but not limited to polygon solana through an upcoming wormhole integration that sounds very space age-ish uh, uniquely built to be interoperable with ethereum okay so this sounds really interesting i, I want to thank you for putting that on our radar What's the total market cap? 600 million. What's the total di uh, fully diluted market cap? Looks like 100 million, uh, 720 million. Okay, so it's almost all the way there. So what you don't want to see is a current market cap or like 10 or 20% of the fully diluted because that means your prices could get diluted. So out of the total available, there's 83 million circulating 
uh, market cap currently 600 million and uh but it the only max fully diluted 720 million so they've got about another 20 percent uh that they are going to dilute with with founders and um token holders etc so that's not too bad uh who are the founders uh, let's see okay so you know these are the kind of things we can dive into more on the m3 active trader class which again you can find out more about at moonstream.io slash m3 but uh, anyway, injective, interesting project here. Certainly, look, this is where you follow the footsteps of elephants. And back to our trade channel strategy. It's very boring and not very sexy. I know this, but does it work? You tell me. Where is this going from here? Up? Most likely up. Uh, I would still defer to our indicators. We have a bullish ERI. Just, just not a lot of volume in these markets right now, you guys. So I would say uh, be cautious. And then, again, my uh, caution here, probably a pullback coming. I wouldn't be chasing it because we have that lower highs on the TSI. Love to see it come back down and be below the 20 line and back up above here for that uh, on INJ. But uh, let's do this. We'll add it to our watch list. Seems like a good one to keep an eye on. And um, let's see, I'm going to put it, uh, where am I going to put this here? I've got a couple of inner circuit market indices. Mean coin. Where's my M3 trade? Oh, it's already in there. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, I know we've seen it before. All right, what else do we want to look at here? ARB, I'm going in the reverse order of what you had asked for. But uh, let's take a look at ARB. Uh, what do they do? Is this Arbitrum? Let's see, yeah, Arbitrum promise fading downtime metrics. I don't know, Arbitrum is a, is a very strong platform. I think they're in gaming. But uh, again, the chart tells the story. Where is it going? It's going down. Uh, and to, you know, the trend is your friend until it isn't. So right now the trend is down. It's below the 21 and 50 day moving average. Had a bullish ERI, TSI not confirming. The TSI has its hand up saying, bye, Felicia. No, we're going down. Some of you will get that reference, some movie Friday. Uh, <laughs> I don't know why it's in my mind. A couple of friends of mine went to a uh, party where that guy Ice Cube was at this last weekend, but a very funny movie. Anyway, rejected at the upward, upward trend channel. And uh, where would you want to see Arbitrum? You know, I would honestly, uh, I'd want to see it back above this local high. So you could set an early alert here around dollar twenty, and maybe even above that. At uh, so buy question mark that means to me go have a look at the chart, but if it gets above this line, this is just as an example. Uh, I'm not suggesting you guys buy or sell or anything like that, but above here, I might say buy exclamations like this is this is the real deal. So often I'll do these staggered alerts. So one with buy question marks hey is it time to buy this make sure you can see this i'll hover the alerts so that tells me hey the this means it's kind of doing something interesting maybe it's breaking out of its trend channel and up here though when i say buy exclamation points it's like okay uh this is kind of breaking out of a local high and then i'd still go look at our indicators uh, to make the final decision does that make sense all right what else did you have we had uh we had arb uh, and uh, OP, I'm not familiar with OP here. Let's see, uh, what is this one here? What does OP do? Well, interesting. Look at Pirate J with some great looking charts here. OP has a great looking chart. No idea what they do, but let's unpack this a bit. All right, well, we have our early reversal indicator. We have the trend strength indicator going up out of the oversold zone and above 20, so right there possible entry point what else do we see we also see that nice uptrending support like that it's also going up when the markets are down so if we were to draw the trend channel that we would normally do what happened there trend channel breakout There's a couple ways we could draw this here but uh either way look at this beautiful chart i love to see these when they come up out into a new trend channel come back and retest and they put in a higher low. So A plus for uh, putting that on our radar here. So what I'll do is add this to our watch list here in the crypto mastery area. Uh, let's see, what does OP token do? No idea. Uh, optimism, okay, I've heard of that layer two for base. 
All right, so I have heard that a bit. And it's available on Coinbase. All right, I'll dig into this a little bit here. Optimism, what do they do? Optimism news, anything uh, rising, a rising activity. So a rising activity means mass adoptions. Uh, people are using it. So how optimism thrives amidst poor market conditions? They must have a great monetization model. Layer two, top of Ethereum. Let's see, benefits from the security of Ethereum mainnet help scale the Ethereum ecosystem by using optimistic rollups. Okay, that makes sense. Like it must be transaction, yeah, transactions on the layer two, uh, kind of like what um, you know ZK rollups are to uh, Polygon Matic, right? Are uh, trustlessly recorded on optimism, ultimately secured on Ethereum. Here's what I'm reading: future acquisition. At some point, we'll see M and A in this space, and is this a likely purchase for Ethereum? Now, that doesn't mean that Vitalik suddenly waves a magic wand. You know, the the ecosystem uh, would uh, you know have to look at how that all works uh, in terms of the the percentage owned by founders, etc. But you know, but that's my point is Google built a massive business and initially just built a massive audience. Ethereum and uh, didn't know how to make money until later. And then they got into advertising and the advertising fueled their massive acquisitions of other companies, mostly for patents. But it would seem to me this would be a target for acquisition or a merger with Ethereum. So anyway, uh, let's see, it's home to 97 protocols. And let's see, as one of the best scaling solutions for ETH with 500 million locked and total volume locked. Yep, cool. So it's it's ringing all the bells here. Biggest uh, other ones, Uniswap runs on it as a DEX. A couple other ones there. And uh, adding the chain on their MetaMask bridging tokens. Okay, so this is cool. I always look at the founders. Is uh, Optimism Foundation, similar Ethereum, Optimism. It needs to be fully decentralized, public good, non profit Oh. Uh, I liked it until now. Public good that is non-profit oriented. Hmm. Oh, well, all right. Optimus funded by pledges produced. So the thing with that is, though, uh, you know, where's the value if they aren't, are not profit uh, motivated? Well, that would be over owners of the token and essentially um, making, uh, you know, going up in value. So let's look at that too. We have the total supply, max supply, already max, already maxed out in supply, fully diluted market cap. Uh, what? Oh, I see. Um, this is this gives me some. Yeah, this isn't great. Is not great. So the the market cap is a billion dollars. Now the fully diluted market cap uh, is six billion dollars. So I don't know about that. that that's questionable for me um but the chart the chart does look good here you guys uh and it's um you know so what do we do now hopefully you understand my steps here so now that we say all right this is bullish potentially and where do i want to see i want to see a 10x this is like a a 1x 1 to 2x not bad it's a sharp stick in the eye but there's some other opportunities out there now that doesn't take into account how high could it go and in this case, we can sort of project out. Um, yeah, I mean, sort of a loose trend channel. But if we were uh, to project this out here to the top of the trend channel, it's got 5x potential. All right, so in the near term, what would get my attention right in this area here? Uh, I would want to know. Let me just eyeball that, you know, resistance all the way back here. So this is a key support resistance area right at $1.84. So resistance here came back, tested as support, lost as support, tested as resistance, lost that came down, lost it as resistance here. Now, normally a third, it's the four, third or fifth time. So this is what I think it's going to happen here. And I'll leave it on here. Boom. Let's see. Where's my uh, drawing tool? We push up like that, come down here, and then we go like this, retest it, and then go higher. So that, that's my read on that. That's usually what we see. So basically, we've got this line, and we've got this line like that. Yeah, so and when it breaks out, it'll come back and retest. So that's, that's what I think happens here. So uh, alert-wise, I'm going to put an alert right here, crossing up above. 
this level dollar 85 and then what do we do Say buy question mark cool yeah so there you have it uh and um brett, brett is optimistic on optimism there you go well said pirate jay so all right guys we'll write up a little bit over the hour i think we had a good class here today again if you're watching the youtube channel please like and subscribe if you'd like to learn more about our indicators and how you can get a month free all you have to do is go to cryptomastery.online you can find out more about that and uh, either go monthly or get yourself a free month of the indicators here uh, as you can see uh, by uh, doing that and then uh, just a biannual subscription 497 these have been our secret weapon uh, all the way along calling the market tops and bottoms those of you in our m3 active trader uh, know that and that uh, we've been going in and out of these markets based on these trading indicators and our daily commentary so if you want more of what we have today on a daily basis go over to moonstream.io uh, we have a signal chat group many of you are in that so you get access to me on a daily basis uh, we have a class a more in-depth class on wednesdays like this one and we also have um a lot more in there but again mostly the daily commentary using the indicators and uh, access to me where i'm updating you guys every day as well as uh membership area and uh etc so anyway um that's all i have for you guys you can learn more about what's included in the m3 active trader that's a bit more but uh includes the indicators that i've just shown you anyway we're here for you guys to help you through this uh, bear market getting the most out of crypto in the next cycle uh, again you know the uh, markets are down today not by a huge amount just enough in those scenarios we want to watch for watch for losing this level here if we can't if we close below 25,300 why 253 if you remember that was that pivotal point back in this area uh, where if we zoom out when in doubt zoom out you know that was kind of the strong support back in here tried to break back above it in august of 2022 took us a while came back up tried to break it here finally broke this 25.3 level give or take and now we tested as support so we're holding as support but it's looking more like a head and shoulders forming and so i would imagine we have some kind of oversold bounce in here forming that right shoulder if we lose the 25.6 level likely that measured move takes us down in this region in this range it's going to be you know hit or miss sort of i would imagine at least coming down if we lose this level at least come back down to this trend line here at about twenty-three thousand. but uh if that can't hold then we've got the golden pocket here i'll just label that the fib golden pocket which is uh tends to hit on these fibonacci golden pocket and that's the 0.618 to 0.65 works on all time frames so that's this here or this trend line that's going higher and then of course the cme gap so um you know that would be to me that would be the lower retest i don't think we'd go below that if we do lose twenty thousand, however uh, obviously uh not great because that's been both support and resistance all the way through here so you know uh we have some levels to watch you guys i'll keep you posted and um again if you have any questions uh, let's let us know all right uh thanks everybody and um, that's all we have for you so we'll talk to you again soon keep an eye out for our upcoming crypto summit virtual crypto summit uh, we're busy interviewing people and uh, some big speakers for that and some great information that's going to be 100 percent free for everyone we'll announce that soon probably going to be opening the doors sometime end of september mid-september end of september all right take care everybody thanks so much